The views and opinions expressed in this podcast do not necessarily reflect those of any major corporation whatsoever. Well then, people, this is it. No more hiding. No more beating around the bush. No more bush beatings. I can't hide it anymore. No, this is it. It's time. It's time to talk about the movie. <sighs> so, so. For the thousands in attendance and the millions listening around the world. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get ready to sparkle! Michael Buffer. Remember when he was everywhere? Michael Remember Buffer? Remember when Michael Buffer was everywhere? Yeah, he was the let's get ready to rumble! Oh, guy. is that what his name was? Yeah, Michael Buffer. He opened every sporting event. He 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 opened the main event of every WCW match. He was on every talk show, yeah. every sitcom. Every sitcom had an episode where Michael Buffer had to show up. Even that '70s show had an episode where Michael Buffer showed up and started doing yeah. his announcements. Like he was, yeah. There was a time when he was everywhere doing his little shtick, and then he copyrighted the phrase "Ready to Rumble." So anytime someone said "Ready to Rumble," He got like a cut of it. They made a Sega fighting game called Ready to Rumble, and he made for that. He was everywhere. I'm pretty sure he opened up every. I'm pretty sure he opened up every scripts Howard Spelling Bee too. He he was the guy who looked like Vince McMahon if Vince McMahon was a Southern preacher. Yeah, with the white hair. Ready to spell. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. So anyway, I'm talking, of course, about this week's film, which, let's just get right to it, it sucks. Oh. It just sucks. Mm. I was stalling with Michael Buffer, but the, this week's film just sucks ass. And, unlike a lot of other bad films that we've done, I got no angle for this. You know? Yeah. I, 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 I got I, nothing. Yeah, I don't, I don't have an angle. There are some things that I hate more than others, you know? Yeah. But it's all really but, like, but, eh, and what the fuck? Just what the good yeah. fuck? <clears throat> yeah, I've got no funny hidden bit. I've got no interesting story. I tried to make an interesting story about the making of the books and the films, and I, I, I think it's interesting, but, like, no, I got nothing. The only angle I had for this week's movie was the fact that nine or ten years ago, my wife was a huge ass fan of the Twilight novels. She yeah. freaking devoured them. She absolutely loved them. She was obsessed. But my wife now says that she was never a fan, and I wouldn't argue with her because it's pointless to argue with my wife because she always wins. <laughs> so it's just it's just honest. Uh, so and, and there were this. a couple of parts in the movie movie that gave me a couple of chuckles. And I don't think they were supposed to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, I, the, and, and, but I will say this. This is one of those films where I hate the film. I hate the film. I wouldn't watch the film. I dislike the film. But the riff tracks are fucking hilarious. I have seen yeah. the riff tracks about seven or eight times. One of the things that I love about it is they really call the film out on their arizona shit where it's like oh there's there's bella and you can tell she's from phoenix because she's holding a cactus like everybody in phoenix does <laughs> and then at the end of the, and then at the end of the film they're like you see this dance studio and you automatically think yup this is a dance studio in phoenix that's what i thought and then you go inside the dance studio at the end, and they're going, wow, what a massive dance studio. Apparently, the entire Russian ballet dances in Phoenix. Mm-hmm. And all the and the vampires are fighting by flying into each other, and it's like, yes, these high, high ceilings are exactly what all dance studios have in Phoenix. Yep, this is a dance studio in Phoenix. I just love that. Like when she finally goes back to Phoenix at the end of the film, it's like, yep, look at those guys there walking down the sidewalk. They're wearing cowboy boots. That's why you know it's Phoenix. (laughs) 
You know, and she comes to the small town in Washington holding a cactus, and it's like, God damn it, you might as well just also give her a pet armadillo, <laughs> yeah. you know? She comes to she comes to Forks, Washington, taking her best uh, her best tumbleweed with her. She also has a bunch of uh, uh, things with cocoa pay on it, and uh, what is it? Turquoise jewelry. She's just covered head to toe in turquoise jewelry. Let's just really phoenix it up. Chewing on a straw. Yeah, it's fucking ridiculous. But anyway, let's get this over with and rip the band aid off. That is. The 2008 Sparky Sparkly Vampire Teen Romance POS, known as Twilight. With this an movie sucks. absolutely unbelievably pretentious opening. Oh yeah. For this yeah. movie. Looks like a deer. Deer like drinking a- water. Kind of serene. Except it's got the blue fucking filter that stays on the entire movie. And Bella is voicing it over, saying, I don't know, something about dying and it's okay or whatever. I, she's a total minge face. Yeah. But I don't give a shit what she has to say. And then the yeah. deer starts running. Um. Yeah. And hold on, we I I believe we have a special guest on the podcast. Who is this special guest, Maxwell? I'm in in the in Iron Suit and in the Hulkbuster. Iron Man in the Hulkbuster suit. Oh, hello, Iron Man in the Hulkbuster suit. What does your Hulkbuster suit do? Uh, it does stuff that my arm and suit does. It can fly. Oh, I thought you were gonna say it bust the Hulk. I thought that was and, kind of and it and, and if Hulk goes crazy and he and he rips off and my one of my arms come off this the the, the thing up 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 on, in, in the sky in, in the sky sometimes yeah. his arms come off. He, he's he's specifically trying to explain scenes and from puts, Avengers to Age puts, of Ultron. And puts, uh, I thought you'd been letting them watch of, Twin Peaks. No, no, no. Maxwell is right. If the Hulk yeah. rips off an arm, then the thing in the sky will give him another arm. Yeah. yeah. And, and if I need to do something to the Hulk, I, I does, I does. Use the suit. No, use these boosters. Get these those boosters in the back, yeah. Yeah, to to, to push the whole back. Oh yeah, that's that's that is a surprisingly accurate description of and the Hulkbuster armor. And I can shoot things out of my hands. But oh, hands. Uh, that's what and, I was. That's what I said. I don't know I why you shoot. heard there. And it looked and cool. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool, yeah, Maxwell. So, oh, thank bye. you. Thank you, Hulkbuster Armor. We will okay. see you later. Thank bye. you, Maxwell. So, Twilight sucks, and it really did ruin the concept of vampires yes. for, like, a freaking generation. Like, vampires are still ruined. Yeah. I'll be at work, and I'll get sparkles. I'll get, like, glitter on me, and I'll, I'll be like, God damn it, I'm a vampire now. You know, it, it ruined vampires. Yeah. Before, before Stephanie Meyer came along with her freaking book, everyone knew who vampires were. They were murderers. They were killers. They looked like Brad Pitt, and they were gay. Yes. And they almost kissed. That was that was the Anne Rice <laughs> vampire. Now Anne Rice is is hoping on making like a like a a. a adult TV series based on her vampire books, and God bless her, I hope she does. Because if there's any series of books that would be good for having an HBO-type series, yeah, I think that the 35,000 freaking vampire and witch books that she wrote 
could easily fit inside of like a like a like a maybe not an HBO but like a Showtime or a Cinemax. You know? I I say let's do and this. I really like Interview that. with a Vampire. Oh yeah. You know, I so let's do this. I I actually. In fact, go ahead. Yep. No, no, no. You go ahead. You go okay. ahead. I I actually even liked Queen of the Damned, kinda. It's not a good movie. Yeah. 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 But it's fun enough. Yeah, it's 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 good on its own. Yeah. I have a really good interview with a vampire story, but I'm trying to not say it because if we ever do the movie, this is going to be a great little tiny centerpiece in the middle of the episode, you know? Oh, okay. So I'm trying not to say my really good interview with the vampire story. But yeah. no, I loved Interview with the Vampire. But, but, but what I'm talking about are the two major crimes, the two major crimes that the Twilight movies, the Twilight series did. Um, two crimes, two big crimes. Number one, Twilight ruined the concept of vampires for like a freaking decade. Yeah. Not only that, but in 2008, a writer whose name is Erica Mitchell started writing very bad erotic, Twilight erotic fan fiction. She wrote yes. a, a series of books under the name Snow Queen's Ice Dragon. And that mm -hmm. name right there is a sign of good writing. Yes. You know you're going to get really high quality Nobel Prize winning writing <laughs> from a person whose name is Snow Queen's Ice Dragon. But her big crime was she got her books and she started selling them uh, as ebooks on Kindle. And yeah. when you're writing... Uh, erotic fan fiction for a popular series selling the books uh, and making a massive profit from them is probably not a good idea. So she made a shit ton of money with her Twilight erotic fan fiction and then the threat of lawsuits came. So she, she stopped selling the books. She got the books that she worked hard on. Basically it's just the Twilight series but mm -hmm. with fucking yeah. She changed the characters, she ch changed the settings, she changed the situation, and, and she renamed this, mm -hmm. she, she also took out the entire supernatural element, and she called her new lawsuit-proof Twilight fan fiction Fifty Shades of Grey. Yes. So in a very real sense, the Twilight series is responsible for both sparkly fucking vampires and all of that Fifty Shades of Grey crap. <laughs> And and you can see the relation. You can see the relation. I mean, the Bella Edward relationship is a damaged, unhealthy relationship. It absolutely is. It Just absolutely like Fifty Cent, Fifty Shades of Grey, and for similar My, I, reasons. Yeah. Now I have only seen Twilight. I have not seen any of the other ones, uh, New Moon or Briocking Down or any of. Yeah. The, I haven't seen any of the other movies at all. I figured I might one day see them if I get the Rift tracks, but I haven't seen any of the other movies. But Well, from what I've heard, I haven't seen them either, but from what I've heard, um, the series really went into a downward spiral, spiral when they went into space. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and they made Jaws like a... They made, like, Richard Keel a good guy. Yeah. That was, that was, that was weird. But, but it was a kind the, of cute the, relationship with the lawn girl with the pigtails. The little, yeah. Yeah. I thought I thought when they added the robot, I thought that that was a bit too much. Oh, like no. Now, it was I definitely was Cousin Oliver. Bitty, bitty, bitty. Yeah, it was, <laughs> it was a bit ridiculous. But the real... When you see Twilight, you go, okay, this relationship is kind of fucked up and stupid and damaging, and he's a stalker, and he's just like... I like to watch you when you sleep. Okay, no relationship <laughs> is good with that phrase injected into the middle of it. Mm -hmm. But the relationship really gets fucked up and dangerous when you think that like 15, 14 year old girls are reading this shit and going uh, goo goo eyes over it. Yeah. In the second book, because in the second book, the one 
a family member with the crazy eyes who uh-huh. looks mousy. That guy, he snaps one day and attacks Bella. Yeah. And Edward stops him from attacking her, but then realizes me just being with you is putting your life in danger. So I need to break up with you because I love you so much. I don't want to put your life in danger. So he breaks up with her and she gets so depressed that she decides that she's going to end her life. So she like jumps off of a cliff and Edward shows up to save her and then disappears again. So that's when she realizes, oh, I miss Edward so much. But when I tried to kill myself and put myself in danger, he appeared. Therefore, if I want to see him again, I got to keep trying to fuck myself up. <laughs> so she keeps trying to fuck herself up just so that she can see him again. Yeah. Yeah. I'm and telling like, you, okay, this is not this a healthy point, relationship. Yeah. It's like, okay, now in the second book, like, okay, you look at twi- the first book, Twilight, and you're going, okay, this is kind of an unhealthy relationship. And then you read book two and say, now it's 100% official. This is all fucked up. And what this is just, the f- now it's 100%. And what the fuck is this I've heard with a wolfman imprinted on a baby? Uh that, that's that now you're like you've jumped directly to the end of the book. There was this whole throughout the second That's going to be awkward. Book, and the fourth book is this whole will they or won't they think because Edward breaks up with Bella and fine, and so it's fucking Taylor Lautner who shows up, and it's like, hey, it's okay. Let me be a shoulder to cry on, and maybe grab your tits. Hey, maybe we should do it. And it becomes this whole will they or won't they thing, and that one thing ends up being in like 70% of all teen books that are written from that point on of just, yeah. oh, I don't know which one of these two cute boys I can choose, you know? Yeah. It was like, oh, are you Team Edward? Are you Team Bella? Mm -hmm. And and it's this whole ridiculous fucking thing. And I know this because I actually threw a Twilight party at my old store in California. And I I remember, I remember I used to. Wow, I just stepped on your story. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. But I remember in in just in just conversations with people I would meet the first time. I not even caring, I would be like Team Edward or Team Jacob. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. I I am team cool black guy who almost kills Bella with his van. <laughs> That's me. I'm team cool black team. The yeah. only black uh, apparently the only black person in Forks Washington Forks Washington who well, almost kills they, Bella. They they have to import them and shipping is expensive. Yeah. 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 But and they really don't the like it. <laughs> yeah. But here's the story of Twilight. Here's the story of Twilight. Yeah. Twilight was written by a Mormon mom originally from Phoenix with literally no prior knowledge of vampire lore whatsoever. I know. What are the odds? It's like you're gonna write this book that's entirely centered around fucking vampires, at least know something about fucking vampires. Mm -hmm. So the story goes, she had a dream one night about a teen girl who meets and falls in love with a vampire. She woke up and immediately started writing that fucking chapter in the woods where uh, he finally, like, admits it and they're they're, they're crouching tiger, hidden dragoning in the tops of the fucking forest and shit. She immediately started writing it. Couple of Mm -hmm. things. Number one, she only wrote it for fun. She never meant it to be published. And number two, and this becomes painfully obvious if you read these books, she never wrote anything ever before now. She never (laughs) wrote a short story. She never wrote fan fiction. She never wrote a novella. She had literally no prior writing history ever. She never wrote a thing. (laughs) <laughs> and it immediately started writing this team book. And she originally was just writing it for fun. And she said, hey, I finished this book. It's kind of good. It's about vampires and teens. And they fall in love. And hey, you want to read it? 
So if she passed it around to some of her friends, and her, her sister is the one who said, hey, you should try and get this published. So she she sent it around to a couple of publishers, and, and a bunch of publishers turned her down. But then um, this publishing... Um, Big Al's House of Books. No. Uh, what's the word where... Uh, a publishing auction company bought it. I didn't okay. even know this existed. But, like, the, I don't know, the book auction published it. And they started uh, hyping it up. And so because the book, op- the book auction company had it, Suddenly, a bunch of different publishers were fighting for the rights to this book. But again, <laughs> they're fighting to the rights of a vampire romance book by a woman who has never written anything. So, uh, but a has but has got mm-hmm. to be thinking to herself, "Wow, I must be really good." Yes. How how, is, how could you not yeah, think I, that if if People are fighting over your book. Yeah. And how wrong can you be? (laughs) I will say one thing. I will give Stephanie Meyer credit for one thing she does. Okay. I hate Stephanie Meyer. I hate the Twilight. I hate Stephanie Meyer. I hate the Twilight books. I hate this entire story. But she does one thing smart. And because of that, I will give her fucking credit. Okay? Okay. Okay. So eventually, Little Brown Publishing shows up in 2005, and they say, Hey, Stephanie, we like your whole uh, teen vampire book. We think it's great. We want to publish it. And we are willing to offer you a three-book deal. For the huge price, the huge massive price of $75,000. And Stephanie Myers goes, wow, that's a lot of money for me, a mom from Utah that has never written anything ever. I will gladly accept this very small amount for a three-figure book deal. Yeah. So in 2005, Little Brown Publishing purchases the rights to Twilight and two other books she's going to write. She gets a really small-ass amount, but she's thinking, hey, I've never written anything before, and I'm not sure if this is going to be good or not. I I mean, it might sell a couple of books, but I'm not expecting a big thing. The book is released. It instantly becomes a number one seller. (laughs) It explodes. It becomes this huge, massive thing, and the way Natasha uh, uh, came up with it the the way Natasha uh, fell in love with this book is beautiful because Natasha said, "Hey, what's the name of that stupid book that every, all the teenage girls are in love with?" And I go, "Yeah, it's called Twilight." And and the second one just came out and it's really huge and people freaking love it apparently. And she goes, "Yeah, I bet that's stupid. You should <laughs> buy it for me and I'll read it and make fun of it." And I go, "Okay, that'll be fun." So I bought it for her and she said, "Yeah, I'm gonna read this stupid book now." I'm going to read this. She's yelling from the other side of the house. She's like, yeah, I'm going to read this stupid book and make fun of it. And so she she starts reading it in bed. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to go to sleep now. And I go to sleep, and I wake up, and she's still reading the book. I hear angry steps coming in. Isn't that that how it happened? Isn't that how it happened? (laughs) No, and you liked it. No, no, no. I would Bunny. love to hear how okay. this happens. See, Steve gets me presents for my birthday, despite the fact that I don't really want anything. And that year, he happened to get me... I hope you remember that this year for your birthday. That's fine with me. <laughs> uh, well, not that year, the year before. He happened to get me two different books, uh, vampire books. Um, okay. The Vampire Academy <clears throat> and... That was, well, I hear that was a terrible movie. I didn't see it. And... Um, Oh. Anyways, there's two different ones in the teen series. They were, uh, uh, what do they call You get a free, the advanced reader's copy. Advanced reader books, yeah. And so I, I was like, all right, cool. And I put off reading them. That was the year I started the Instagramming my birthday with okay. the DMV. It's like the 25th. 
anyway, so I put it off, put it off, didn't read them. And I was like, you know what? I want to read a book. Picked them up and I read them. And I read through everything they had in the series. So once I was done with those two series for what they had, Steve was like, mm-hmm. you can always read Twilight. But Twilight? I mean, I guess I could. You were automatically against it because it was popular. And that's the sort of exactly. thing that I do. And I'm like, and oh, I'm not going to be into this. Everybody loves this. I'm yes. Not gonna I was like, man, they're, I, I'm done with these books, man. Fuck. Well, they're vampire books. You can always read Twilight. And I was like, nah. Well, yeah. hmm, I guess I could. Ah, oh, fuck it. Go ahead and get me the book. So he got me the book. Like, and you stayed up reading it. That's the that's one part that I'm pretty sure I nailed. That like I remember you're like, okay, I'm gonna sit, lay in bed and read this, and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna go to bed. And I go to bed. Oh yes, no, and then I, I wake up, up and you were still reading that goddamn book, and I'm like, I... are you serious? I'm waking up. He's he's getting ready for work and shit, and I'm like, <laughs> shut up. I don't give a fuck. Shut the fuck up. I'm on the last chapter. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I read the books, but that's not how it happened. You started by getting me those other vampire series books, and I read them all, and then you were just like, here's Twilight, because I know that I'm going to be able to fucking shove this in your face so, later. So kind of like out. kind of like a drug dealer, the first taste is free, that kind of a thing? Yeah. <laughs> sure, and then he's, sure. And then and, he's got you. He, he can pull you into Twilight World. Uh, see, and, and two of those book series have, were made into movies. One, only, only one movie was made, and I hear it was terrible. And Twilight, we all know, is terrible. So, <laughs> But yeah, so I did read these books. I did stay up all night reading them. But in my defense, I do that with all of my books. Yeah, you do. So, like, it's not Twilight-specific. Um, just when I start reading, I can stop if I like the book. And I liked the book. At the time, I enjoyed it. Blue back now, Filter. That's that's all like blue filter. Blue filter. There was a blue filter on this movie through the entire movie. Oh. <laughs> yes. Oh. Like they put the blue filter, Steve. like they put the blue filter on, on their first shot, and then they were going to the second shot, and they were just like, "Yeah, fuck it, we'll just leave it on." What the hell? Right. You know, and I, well. I, I, I don't know. That's so. That's. You know, if you're going to use a filter, use a damn filter. You know? Put the blue filter on whenever Edward enters the scene. Put an orange filter on whenever Jacob enters the scene. Use the filters. Right. Oh, it's no, no, I haven't gotten to that. Okay. That's right, right before we get to the plot is when we mention the banter. Okay, well, I'm going to ask him. Bunny, yes. do, you, do you ever watch True Blood? Triple A. Okay. See, good. no, I, yeah, I, I, I thought I we had it. a conversation about him it. watching it before. Okay, okay. good, because that'll come in handy. Okay. So here's the part where I will give, I will honestly give author um Sarah Meyer, Stephanie Meyer Stephanie Meyer credit. Yeah. Before I get to giving her credit, I'm gonna talk about someone who I hate. Ah. Awesome. Okay. Fucking Jeff Jarrett. <laughs> Jeff fucking Jarrett. Yes. Country guy from WWF. Mm-hmm. He played like a cocky redneck guy, and I'm pretty sure that at some point in time he just decided to become his character. He just decided, oh well, I'm just gonna be an asshole now. Mm-hmm. You know, and he, he he's just. This, this guy that I always hated and I never liked, I never ever liked him, and I hate him, and I hate everything he's done, and I've never liked him, and fuck Jeff Jarrett. But he did one thing yeah. that I will give him fucking credit for, which is he spent like half of a year building up a rivalry between China, the ninth wonder of the world. Mm-hmm. She's taller than most of the men wrestlers. She's stronger than most of the men wrestlers. She can beat up any man in the fucking WWF Uh locker room, and yet she never was given a chance, just ever. She was always like a on the arm of another man, Mm -hmm. and China wants to actually be... She thinks she can be champion. She thinks she can have a chance to be one of the biggest wrestlers. She can already beat anybody in the locker room. So 
a woman has never held a major title and Jeff Jarrett holds the intercontinental title. So he spends half a year building this massive rivalry up with her and constantly beating her down and her constantly trying to get the title and him weaseling away. And it finally leads to this big paper yes. match and it's going to be Jeff Jarrett versus China for the Intercontinental Championship, and finally, China arrives excited. Well, what about the match? What about the match itself? Oh, no, here's the thing. China shows up to the arena super excited because she's finally going to have this match for the title, and the entire fucking arena is in a panic, and she's like, what's wrong? And they tell China what happens. Apparently, Jeff Jarrett realized that the day before the pay-per-view, his contract expired. Oh. He didn't tell a goddamn person about it. So finally, like eight hours before the pay-per-view, he finally says, hey, Vince McMahon, guess what? My contract expired uh, six hours ago. So if you want this pay-per-view match to happen, you need to pay me a shit ton. Ooh. And so they ended up paying him massive, a massive fucking amount of money for one fucking match. They literally paid him like millions of dollars to wrestle one match because oh. they had no other fucking choice. I hate Jeff Jarrett, but God damn it. He ended up getting a massive billion dollar corporation to its fucking knees. Mm hmm. You know? Yeah, yeah, I Just, can see that. But that was the everything but the kitchen sink match, right? Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. It was this big, massive match, and he built it up as this big, massive match because he knew he was smart and, and knew contract expires the day before. I'm going to keep telling them. I'm going to say, oh, I'm going to sign. I'm going to sign this extension. I'm going to sign this extension. I'll get to it. Don't worry about it. Mm -hmm. And he never did, so that he literally just have this man in the entire corporation by the balls and say guess what i'm not on contract you want this giant match to happen you need to pay me a shit ton of money True. like he i fucking hate jeff jarrett but god damn it i respect you for that one thing you did it, he you worked know? it he worked it yeah and he got so it Stephanie and, and wrestling wrestling paid a ridiculous yeah wrestling is a, is kind of a screw each other over business anyway yeah, yeah, it's like uh, it's like a, 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 yeah. You can either make friends or make money. Yeah, that's from that wrestling documentary. What is it? Beyond the Mat, I think it's called. I think so. That's a good documentary. Anyway, Stephanie Meyer gets paid a surprisingly low amount of money for three incredibly popular genre changing culturally defining books <laughs> yeah sure she gets a portion of the sales and she gets a portion when when a movie is it, she gets a stipend when the movie is turned option for a when the book is option for a movie and when the movie comes out and yada 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 she gets paid for all that but still three major uh uh generationally defining books she gets paid a very small amount of money for it. So what she does is, oh, yeah, hey, guess what? This third book is going to come out, this third massive book. I'm already a best-selling author, and everybody loves me. But guess what? I have a slight change of plans. You know this trilogy? Yeah, it turns out I had a lot more to write. <laughs> so now it's a series of four books. <laughs> And I am now building towards this massive climax in this fourth book. And oh, hey, look at this. Little Brown Publishing only signed me for three books. Wow. I guess if you want this massive final book in the series, you're going to have to pay me an ass load. Nice. That it's is the nice. Of millions of dollars. And it's like, God damn it, I hate you, Stephanie Meyer. But that's the smartest fucking thing you did. Mm-hmm. You made a lot of mistakes, but God damn it, I respect you for that. That's smart as hell. Yeah. That's that's like uh, that's like George Lucas saying, "Oh, this one Star Wars movie? No, I'm I, no, you misheard me. I meant to say there are three. Did I say three? I meant to say six. Yep, nine movies. <laughs> I am making 
nine Star Wars movies. <laughs> of course, he was lying out of his ass, but it's the same thing. Like you made you made a, a, a Scrooge McDuck's money bank full of money from Star yeah. Wars, and goddammit, Stephanie Meyer saw an opening and she went for it, and goddammit, I respect her for that. <laughs> yes. So Twilight, and I totally number... agree. Yeah. So Twilight became a number one bestseller and led to four books, a novella called The Secret Life of, of Brie Tanner. My wife and I had a, a big argument over what the name of the novella was. At yeah. first, she thought it was called The Short Secret Life of Brie Larson, and I tried to tell her that that was the name of the woman from Kong Skull Island. Uh-huh. And then no name of a, a, a woman from a Twilight book. And then I tried to convince her that the book was called The Short Secret Life of DJ Tanner, but she quickly saw through that. So then we finally realized that it was just a combination of the two, and it was called The Short Secret Life of Brie Tanner. It's a weird novella because it's like a 150-page book about a character that's only in about two scenes in one of her actual books. <laughs> It's like, wait a second. It's like if Stephen King released a Cujo novella and it's like 170 pages just about one of his fleas. Yeah. You know? This is weird. Like, why are you even doing this? It's like, I guess it's good, but also pointless, you know? Yeah. Uh, Stephanie Meyer also wrote an illustrated Twilight uh, uh, reference encyclopedia book, and in 2015, she released a uh, anniversary version of Twilight. That, if you flipped the book over, it featured a gender swapped version of Twilight where Bella is the vampire, and that, that book was amazing for its utter pointlessness. <laughs> Literally the same book, except now. One with the dick is the human. It really is. It, it was pointless. <laughs> so there's a lot wrong with the series. Edward is creepy and controlling and breaking in and watching her sleep. He's an abusive boyfriend. It sends yeah. a dangerous message to kids. Bella is a weak world girl who needs saving and vampires mm -hmm. don't fucking sparkle. And some have accused the books of secretly promoting abstinence, which I didn't realize. Uh, Many people. Okay. Edward refuses to do anything with Bella until they're married. Uh. So many people have accused the books uh, of of being bad and having a strong anti women message. But let's focus on for a, for a small little bit on actual good writer Stephen King. He did an article in Entertainment Weekly about Twilight because people were saying, the Twilight series, this is the next Harry Potter. Is Twilight the next <laughs> Harry Potter? And at the time, Stephen King was writing articles for the back page of Entertainment Weekly, so they asked him about, about it, and he wrote this quote, and it's so good. I love this quote from Stephen King. Quote, the real difference between J.K. Rowling and Stephanie Meyer is that J.K. Rowling is a terrific writer, and Stephanie Meyer can't write worth a damn. <laughs> Man, no. that is harsh. Stephen King throwing shade. <laughs> Love that man. Well, he also I I I, I'm, I can't think of what it is now, but he also has a had another really big quote concerning that. Um, something about the characters in Harry Potter fighting evil, learn the value of friendship, you know, all of this, and Twilight. It's really good to have a boyfriend. Yeah, 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 basically that. Yeah. But, but a successful book is a successful book, so Hollywood came calling. The movie rights to Twilight was quickly purchased by freaking MTV. <laughs> MTV yeah. said, want to make a Twilight movie. Hey, this Twilight book is pretty popular. We're going to quickly get to work making a Twilight film. But the problem with MTV is that beyond Jackass, MTV can't make a successful movie to save their damn lives. Mm -hmm. So Twilight... Well, ranked... back in the day, Joe's apartment was pretty entertaining. God, Joe's apartment. God, Joe's apartment. You may be <laughs> the only person 
the first person in 2017 to mention Joe's apartment. Mm -hmm. And that includes Jerry O'Connell, the star of Joe's apartment. Yes. <laughs> like even cockroaches aren't mentioning Joe's apartment. Like, ah, can we forget that? Let's mention Creep Show instead. We were big in Creep Show. Well, I remember when it when it even started on MTV is just a little bit. Yes, it was just, it was just a... like tiny short films of a guy who lived in an apartment with cockroaches. I love those yeah. short films. MTV took chances back in the day. Yeah. It MTV. Did. Yeah. So the problem so Twilight languished in development hell with MTV for three freaking years. For three years, they tried to make a Twilight movie. And apparently the problem with MTV making a Twilight movie is that MTV had no faith in Stephanie Meyer. So MTV kept saying, it's like, okay, we're going to make a Twilight movie. These Twilight movies, these Twilight books are popular, so we need to make a Twilight film and make it fast. So let's make this movie. Let's make this movie. There's Bella Swan. We don't like that name, Bella Swan. People won't believe that. Her name is Bella Jameson. Her name is Bella Jameson. She needs more to do. Let's make her, uh, I don't know, let's make her a basketball player. No, let's make her a track star. So Bella Jameson is a track star. Then she falls in love with this vampire and her, his clan of vampires. That's that, that's not that's not good. We can't get a clan. Let's just make it Edward. Edward is a vampire. He's on his own. And we need to make him cool. Let's put him in a leather jacket. Let's put him in a leather jacket and a motorcycle. Let's make this guy cool. And also his dad. His, her, Bella's dad is too sad. We need to make him funny. Let's get Jack Black. So Jack Black is Bella's funny dad and it got to the point where they they had this script for a twilight film and it was in no way twilight it was in twilight the same way that the first uh casino royale was a james bond movie yes okay like you say it's twilight because the name is twilight and there's vampires in it but this is in no way twilight <laughs> So eventually MTV just changed. It just said, okay, we can't make this film. Nobody's ever going to make this Twilight movie. We tried and we're done. And so after three long, long ass years, MTV just tapped out and they dumped Twilight. And it was quickly picked up by an upstart studio named Summit Entertainment. And they said, we promise to be, to listen to the Twilight fans out there and promise to be, 100% loyal to Stephanie Meyer's goddamn books. Okay. Which they were, unfortunately. <laughs> the first film was directed by Catherine Hardwick, and the film, I believe, still has the record for the highest opening weekend for a film directed by a woman, which is sad because uh, women get screwed. Yes. Um, that's why it was really weird to be watching secret agent 72 but yeah. it, this is the part that surprised me the first twilight film made a little under 400 million dollars worldwide and when i heard that number i said that can't be right that first twilight movie was fucking huge and everybody loved it and it was number one and how could the worldwide grosses be so small that does not sound like a big hit no but then i looked it up the film was made for $37 million. Yeah, that's like, oh. definitely a decent haul. Yeah. That's like, okay, well, when you realize that the film was made on the fucking cheap, then, okay, yeah, I can see that this film was huge. And the film also made stars out of the smug narcolepsy sufferers who starred in the film. Yeah. Kristen Stewart, she has been on SNL twice. The last time she was on SNL, she came out as gay. And, oh, really? Uh, she did yeah, she she did a pre yeah she was talking in the monologue about how Donald Trump was obsessed with her relationship with Robert Pattinson and yes. and at the time when they were dating she would not stop uh not stop he would not stop tweeting about her yeah. so she said yeah I'm a bit nervous being on the show because now Donald Trump is president and there's a good chance he might be seeing this episode. He might be seeing me right now. We already know he watches SNL. Yeah. So there's a good chance that he might be seeing me here right now. I don't know. Maybe he is just obsessed with me. But let me just say, dude, I am so gay. <laughs> and that was the first time that she mentioned it. It's the first time ever that she published, she publicly, directly mentioned that she was gay. 
and so it, <laughs> it like the internet went nuts and people loved it. And nice. It, and yeah, she did a good. Yeah, you know, she did a good job on SNL the last time. And also, star Robert Pattinson, he got his first uh, his first acting role was as poor doomed Cedric Diggory mm-hmm. in uh, one of the Harry Potter movies. Goblet of the Fire, I think. And it's funny. Yeah. And it's interesting looking back at that. What did he have like ten lines in that film? That's really like really it. yeah. Like he how was... much did Robert Pattinson talk in that movie? Yeah, I think there's only like two or three scenes where he had lines. But I, I, also, we have to say this is Robert Pattinson's second appearance on the podcast. Remember me as a fucking amazing film. <laughs> yes, it is. I An love... amazing. <laughs> I love the ending of that film, Jesus Christ. But see now this now film. this Bella character though, I cannot not your daughter. I, I this is gonna be difficult to talk about. But th- this Bella character I, I I do not like her at all. Just oh, a yeah. just a just a a mingy face, just you know, just and by extension, I, I got to hate Kristen Stewart for it. Yeah. But she you totally do. won me over in American Ultra. That, she that is a won, fun movie. She won me over in the film Adventureland, which I really like. Adventure? I've never watched Adventureland. I don't know why. Interestingly enough... Adventureland was filmed way, 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 way before Twilight, but Adventureland came out way, 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 way after Twilight. In fact, uh, the director, Catherine Hardwick, and some of the studio heads actually went to the set of Adventureland to give an impromptu uh, audition for Kristen Stewart on the set of Adventureland for the Twilight movies. Which is nice. interesting because apparently, and I looked it up because Adventureland came out way after Twilight, and I was confused about this story. So as it turns out, Adventureland was uh, filmed a long ass time ago. But then the studio sat on it because they said, "Oh, wait a second, there is no one in this film that anyone knows. We're not going to release this movie if no one knows who any of these people are. I mean, who's Kristen Stewart? No one knows who that is. And who's this other guy? Um, uh, yeah, he's been in nothing." The star of the film. No one knows who he is. No one knows who this guy is. We're never going to release this film. The only people who anybody knows in this film are the two guys from SNL. And as of right now, those people are infamous. No one knows who Kristen Wiig is. Mm -hmm. We're not going to release this film at all. So they sat on the film. And then eventually two things happened. Number one, Twilight happened. And number two, the star of Adventureland starred in Zombieland. Yes. And they're like, holy shit, we have to release this film now. So they released Adventureland, and at first I didn't see the movie. And I didn't see the movie because I saw it for what it really was. All the previews sh- tried to it, give the impression that, oh, Adventureland, a fun comedic romp. This is going to be hilarious. It's Caddyshack all over again. Meatballs. You're going <laughs> to love this film. But I'm like, oh, wait a second. I know what this is. This is a low budget art movie about uh, two people's relationship. This is a touching coming of age drama. I'm not watching this. <laughs> but what made me watch the film is the fact that it was filmed in Kennywood Amusement Park. Kennywood. Kennywood. The film was filmed in Kennywood. And Kennywood is one of the oldest amusement parks in the, the frickin' planet. Is and that the, only is that the one that was in the vacation movie? No, National Lampoon's Vacation was filmed in a, a Magic Mountain, okay. Six Flags. Yeah. But Kennywood is one of the oldest amusement parks. It 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 it, it, it it's a historic it's a historic monument now. It, it's a, a landmark place and the only reason I know anything about Kennywood is because one day I was in uh, like junior high and I was sick. And when I was sick, I was not allowed to leave the bed. I had a TV in front of the bed. And as it turns out, my local Phoenix P- 
PBS station had nothing else to show that day that I was sick. So they showed a four hour documentary of the history of the Kennywood amusement park. <laughs> cool. And I remember thinking, oh my God, this is the most amazing place in the world. Such history, such old rides that are still operational to this day. Yeah. One of these days, I promise myself, I'm going to Kennywood. So I didn't care about Adventureland until I said, oh, this is going to be an art film and it's going to be this teenage boy. He gets a job in an amusement park. He meets a girl. They have an awkward romance. Yeah, I've seen this film before. What? It's filmed in Kennywood? I need to see this immediately. Well, then maybe that's what made American Ultra so good, because they've worked out basically that same plot a couple of times yeah. together. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, no, I, I like Kristen Stewart. She gets a pass. I'm not sure about Robert Pattinson, but God damn it, Remember Me is a bold-ass film. You have some balls he's, to make that movie. He's made some ballsy choices. They he just, has. He has. They just have not hand out for him he's really he yeah. really seems like he's going for uh, a kind of a cult movie kind of a guy you know he was in that cronenberg movie cosmopolitan i think it was called which was almost kind of good yeah yeah but he he easily could have made like more blockbusters after Twilight and starred in all of these films and been action films and romance films, but instead he seems to be making the movies he wants to make. Yeah. So he gets like a pass for that. The Twilight series of movies made over $3.3 billion worldwide and started the annoying ass trend of having the last book in a series be split up into two movies. Yes. Good. I saw yeah. Twilight. I saw Twilight in a midnight showing. My wife forced me to go with her. I literally counted nine men in the theater besides me, and I did grow a vagina. <laughs> yes, in the theater. So well, that's good because because that. if you didn't grow a vagina, they they would have lent you one, like a tie in fancy restaurants. Yeah, yeah, uh -huh. yeah. So that's the story of Twilight. It's shit. It is shit. The only shit. thing I like about it is two things. The only two things I like about it is, number one, Anna Kendrick's boobs. She plays mm -hmm. the cute, slight, slightly hyperactive, normal, busty BFF. Her yeah. scene of trying on prom dresses is like 45 seconds, but oh my god, big fan. <laughs> and number two, Taylor... Number two... Taylor Lautner's ridiculously fake hair is hardly in this film. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Oh my god! Like, like that is so fake. He he doesn't look like a like a like a werewolf. He looks like Cher. <laughs> yes, he does. You look, he's he's you gonna look break like out Shetland in half Shetland breed. Shetland. Yeah. Yeah. You look like a Shetland Cher, my <laughs> friend. <laughs> No one is buying this. But now you really have to appreciate she steps in front of the fan and he starts to retch. Yeah. That was funny. That was funny. That was that was that was worth a yeah, a halfway decent a golf clap kind of laugh. Yeah. Okay. So I've I've got I've got a I've got a plot breakdown here, and I've got an interesting epilogue, and I've got some ideas for the next uh, movie that we do. But we need to quickly talk about fan fiction. Fan fiction. N my yes. wife, my wife Natasha has read somewhere that author Stephanie Meyer was a fan of the True Blood series of books. Okay. And that she had read all of the True Blood books, and she liked the True Blood books. And so uh, that is probably one of the big reasons why she goes to sleep and has a dream about a girl falling in love with a vampire. Mm -hmm. And then wakes up, has an idea for a book, and writes it down. And Natasha told me this morning, she writes a lot of fan fiction. And a lot of that comes from the fact that, hey, I'm watching the Supernatural episode, I'm watching this other episode of Supernatural. 
Supernatural. I'm watching this other episode of Supernatural. I'm going to go to bed, and guess what I'm going to dream about? Yeah. I'm going to dream about fucking Supernatural. I wake up, I have an idea for a Supernatural story. So it is her belief okay. that Steph Meyer subconsciously stole the fucking idea from Twilight, for Twilight, from the True Blood novels. Uh, and it, it makes a, it makes a, it, it, it's logical. It's understandable. It is logical. And also she's read all of the Twilight books and she's read, I, I believe, a majority of the True Blood books. And she says that there are a lot of similarities between the relationship between the vampires and the werewolves in the Twilight saga and some of the relationships between the different characters in the True Blood series. And that, yes, Fifty Shades of Grey was fan fiction based on Twilight, but if you really get down to it, Twilight is just a teen, a teen romance fan fiction version of True Blood. Uh, I, I can see it. I can yeah. see it. I Basically, see, it's all I, I can see where writing fan fiction could be a lot of fun. You know, I could yeah. see how that could be fun. Um, but I don't think people should do it just for the same Fifty Shades of Grey thing. Now, now you got a bunch of books and stuff that you put a lot of work into and holy shit, one of them's good and you can't do anything with it. Yeah. You know? Yeah, so, so now what am I supposed to do with my very popular story, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, except Mr. Rogers is a Nazi and he just fucks everyone. Yes. Now this book is super popular and I can't do anything about it. What about my other now very popular series, Bob Ross Masturbates? <laughs> what am I supposed to do with that? It's a popular book and now I can't do a thing with it. Mm -hmm. What am I supposed to do with my very popular fan fiction series, Sesame Street Gangbang? Yeah. Hugh Downs, Streetwalker. Nice. Mm -hmm. Nice. So let's really quickly uh, run through the plot of Twilight. Very quickly. I think there are just a couple of stops I want to make. Go ahead. Yeah. So pale, unexcited waif Bella Swan moves from Phoenix to Forks, Washington, takes a look around town, and immediately moves back to fucking Phoenix at the end. <laughs> I mean, there's no contest. America's fifth biggest city or flannel wearing redneck nowhere it's no contest well this has been a good episode <laughs> yeah. so anyway bella moves to forks uh we are to somehow believe she's like a 16 year old mm -hmm. she's now living with her father who is literally every small town sheriff faced with the supernatural in every low budget movie yeah uh-huh uh she if he, if he drank, he would have been Wolf Cop. Exactly. It, it, yeah, all is missing is the alcoholism. Yeah. She goes to Forks High School, home of the Fighting Incontinent Badgers. Yes. That's just a guess. I don't exactly know. Honey she Badger don't care. People. Yeah. She meets a bunch of people. She meets Tiny uh, Jacob, a.k.a. Taylor Lautner. She meets a flaming Asian Eric. Yes. Normal, vague-looking hunk Mike, mm -hmm. Anna Kendrick's Jessica, because on the first day of school, you literally meet everyone instantly. Yes. Which is always that's, a good thing about high school. That's how school is. <clears throat> yeah. Then in the cafeteria, she meets the Sparkly family. Why have your immortal 1,000-year-old vampire kids go to high school? Let alone... Have your kids go to high school over and over and over again. It makes no sense to me, but anyway. No. Bella takes to Edward, the sullen vampire teen. After she got her stink And they all have over. class. Yeah. They have class together, and Edward acts like he can't stand her at all, probably because she smells so bad. So, yeah. yada, yada, yada. Edward stops going to school, and a factory worker is chased by a shaky handheld camera. Yeah, that's really scary. You gotta hate it when a shaky handheld camera starts chasing you. The guy well, they can, they can, they can, they can, they they can keep stinging even after they're dead. Yeah, 
Mm-hmm. I actually didn't know this until the last time I saw it, but I was looking up things about Twilight. I learned that director Catherine Hardwick decided to film the entire movie with a handheld camera to quote, make the film seem more real. <laughs> then take the blue well, filter off. <laughs> but when you know that about the film, there are some shaky ass camera moments that become really fucking annoying. Yeah. Like there are some scenes where like uh, Edward and Bella are talking in the forest and it's like, God damn it. Did you give the camera to Michael J. Fox or something? Cause you need to calm that shit down. Camera man. You need to calm it down. Mm-hmm. So, um, Yada, yada, yada. Edward stops going to school. Guy killed by... Guy gets killed. People think it's by an animal. A week passes, and Edward comes back to school. He starts chatting it up with Bella. He's mysterious. And and the thing I love about Edward is he acts like every word he says hurts him. Yes. And I, I was trying to explain this to Natasha. That's why you don't see a lot of vampires at McDonald's, because it's just... I would like a number four. You have to act like every, if you're going to do an Edward impersonation, you have to act like literally every word you say hurts. Well, all you really have to do is act constipated. Yeah. And take an ambient. Mm -hmm. Because you can't get too excited. You Mm -hmm. can't get too excited. But, but you haven't, you haven't crapped in half a century. That's it. Yeah. That's that's yeah. the tone I was getting. Oh, 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 great, great side story. Great side story about the making of Twilight. Okay. So there okay. are three there are three boys in the in the Cullen clan. There's Edward, the sullen vampire. Yeah. There's the chicken in in there's the deer in headlights vampire who looks like Harpo Mark. Mm-hmm. And then there's the buff, angry, dumb one. The buff, angry, dumb one is played by an actor named Kellen Lutz. And apparently, in real life, he has no brain. <laughs> and so in all, of the scene, in all of the scenes where they're in the cafeteria, all of the vampires are not supposed to eat. You are never supposed to see the vampires eating. They make a point of saying, hey... Vampires can't eat human food. They can't digest it, so they can't eat. But if you apparently, if you put food in front of Kellen Lutz, Kellen Lutz will always eat the food. Okay. And so they had to take take after take after take, and it's just God damn it for the fiftieth time, Kellen Lutz, stop eating the food in the cafeteria. <laughs> and he's good. Okay, okay, I, I think I got it this time, guys. Okay, let's just do take. Take 84, and this time I swear I won't eat the fries. <laughs> oh, hey, fries. Hum, hum, hum. And knowing this, there are scenes where you, you see from afar, and all the, the, the vampire teens are just in the, in the cafeteria, just staring intently at Bella. And then yeah. you see a close up of Edward, and goddammit, in the back, you see fucking Kellen Lutz just chewing down. He is chomping. <laughs> on food there are seeds where you definitely if you know this story you can't help but see the vampire the dumb ass vampire eating fucking food <laughs> it's like oh my god honey thank you for telling me this story you're right he's eating a ton of fucking food in this well w- were any of them particularly too bright i mean you know edward was literally stalking bella Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Until he comes up to her while she's getting her lunch to say, yeah. you have to keep away from me. <laughs> that was a good, that was a good. Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> yeah. You do not see an inherent problem here? Yeah. How about don't walk up to her? <laughs> yeah. So, so here's my favorite scene in the whole movie, other than Anna Kendrick's boobs. So, after school, Bella has her earbuds in, 
and a van skids towards her to crush her. Lucha! 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 But then Edward saves her by stopping the van. Boo! Yeah, I know. Very disappointing scene. Yeah. Which makes Bella suspicious. Like, oh, he was so far away, suddenly he appeared so fast, and he stopped the van with his hand. Then uh, he appears in her room, staring at her sleeping. That's a fucking creepo move there. So, so, and then here's the part that I mentioned earlier. Throughout this whole thing, she's obsessed with Edward. Meanwhile, people, regular, nice, non-vampiric people, keep asking her to the prom, and she's really bitchy about it. Yeah. She's like, oh, are you asking me to the prom? Oh. I'm sorry, I didn't notice you were doing that because I don't give a fuck about you. <laughs> Life is for the living, Bella. Uh huh. I'm not talking about you, Bella. I'm not talking about you. We named Bella. Bella, Isabella, yes. with one L. Um, and then afterwards, you know, we realized we were having another child, and it was a boy. And I said, "Oh my God, we're having a boy." I'm so excited. And already, honey, I got the okay for this. I got the okay for this from you a long time ago. When we have our first son, we're naming him Edward. Yes. After Edward D. Wood Jr. Holy shit, we're going to have Edward and Bella. Abort! Abort mission! Abort (laughs) mission! We need a new name! I refuse to have an Edward and Bella in my fucking house! (laughs) I'm still upset about that. I'm still upset about still that. Like, like I love the name Maxwell, and yeah. I love the fact that his middle name is Edward Maxwell Edward. But goddamn, I wanted an I wanted an Edward. I yeah. wanted an Edward in my house. I'm still so upset about that. God damn, I, Twilight! I, I, I don't blame you. Twilight yeah. ruins lives. Yeah, I can't have a Bella and an Edward in the family. That's just gonna ruin everything. And. Ladies, when your boyfriend tells you that he's a killing machine, okay, and how he's evolved to kill and how he's a killer and all he could do is kill, and he keeps reminding you on your dates how he could kill you. An appropriate answer to that is not, I don't care. No, you should be fucking caring about this. Might be what he's a little is pertinent information. Might m- might be a little bit of a red flag. I'm thinking. Red flag. It's the same problem that I have with the book, The Cat in the Hat. You know, when a giant anthropomorphic cat breaks into your house and says, "Hey, we're gonna play for the day," and then your fish, which has never talked before, jumps out of the bowl and says. This cat shouldn't be here. Maybe you should listen to the fucking talking fish, kids. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it's... say, you know what? Uh, maybe I should be listening to this. Maybe I should be uh, heeding the warnings. Yeah. It's just like that Elton John song, you know? Don't discard me just because you, just because you think I, I mean you harm. No, that's the exact reason, that is the exact reason to discard somebody. And always listen to your talking fish. (sighs) Yeah, I love that song. So So anyway, yada, 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 tension, will they or won't they? Edward is a fucking stalker. So there's a big gathering at the beach, La Push is what they call it. And Taylor Lautner shows up. And Bella starts talking with Taylor Lautner, who suddenly becomes Johnny Exposition. Uh And he explains about how the Taylor Lautner Indians are, their tribe is descended from wolves. And then the Sparkly family gets into a fight. And so they have a treaty to stay off each other's land. Then there's a scene. I did, I did appreciate over Taylor Lautner's head. I appreciated the sign that kept blinking. Set up, set up, yeah, set yeah. up. Yeah. It, 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 
made his story make a little more sense. Well, not make sense, but we knew what it, what it was supposed to be doing. Taylor Lautner does not make sense in this movie. You understand the fact that, okay, in in the next movie, in the next movie or two, in the next book or two, this Taylor Lautner character is going to be a love interest, but he, it doesn't make sense. Here's Edward Cullen, six foot two, brooding, mysterious. Here's Taylor Lautner, a five foot eight inch, 12 year old. <laughs> And he's supposed to be a werewolf. It doesn't make sense. He looks like a fucking little like twelve year old kid. Like no, no, I no, no. I think that was a really good choice. Um, but the Christmas special, the littlest werewolf that they were planning on doing, just fell through. Yeah, you know, yeah. had they been able to hit that milestone, then it all would have made a lot more sense. I am vaguely ashamed at how long our Twilight episode is going to be. And I apologize. Yes, but, but it was really Trump's fault. I'm sorry. Yeah, there's just a lot to shit on. Yes. You know? And I just, I apologize. But anyway, it's time for the most important part of Twilight in terms of the Church of Ed Wood. Okay. Because after the La Push beach scene, there is a scene where Kathy Wood's chiropractor and Bella Lugosi's bodyguard is attacked by pretentious Hot Topic employees. <laughs> and Bella Lugosi's body double has his cape in front of his face. I want to suck your blood. Mm -hmm. It's weird because you're watching Twilight, but suddenly uh, Bill Murray shows up in the middle of nowhere. Let's hear you call Boris Karloff a cocksucker. <laughs> Bill Murray in Ed Wood looks more like a vampire than than anyone does in this film. Yes. N nobody in town, anybody notice how pasty they all are? Yeah. Yeah. Might be another red flag, I'm just saying, you know. Yeah. Yeah, so Bella starts doing research into wolves and whatever the sparkly family is. And then and then here's one quote. There's two quotes I wrote down in the, from the film, directly from the film. And here's one quote that really just bothers me. Quote, whenever the weather is nice, Dr. and Mrs. Cullen pull the kids out of school for, like, camping and fishing and stuff. Yeah. No, no. That that no, is not I, that is no. not reality. No, I can believe that vampires and werewolves are locked in this ancient battle in the middle of Washington, but I cannot believe that there are parents out there who, whenever it is sunny, will take their kids out of school for camping. <laughs> no, bad movie. <laughs> Call bullshit on that. No mm -hmm. way. Anyway, on the way home from dress shopping and book buying, again, the dress shopping scene, it's 45 seconds, but goddamn, I, I love this movie. It's well worth your time. <laughs> yeah. On second thought, Greg, maybe I was being a bit hasty. <laughs> so, so after uh, dress trying on and book buying, Bella is attacked by the sexual harassment gang. And Edward yeah. suddenly Tokyo drifts into the scene, <laughs> scaring the guys away and saves Bella. And they have a creepy dinner date where he doesn't eat shit. Interesting postscript. Later on in the Twilight series, you learn that after their creepy dinner date, Edward went back, tracked down the sexual harassment gang and fucking killed him. Good. Yeah. Good. It's you the sexual later. it's a bad name yeah. choice for your gang. Yeah, and it's that's just asking for trouble. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You should have called yourself the get along gang or something people, like that. People will misinterpret you know, the sexual harassment yeah. gang. They'll just misinterpret what that means. Yeah. You know. So during the dinner date, Edward keeps saying things like it, it, like he heard what those bad guys were thinking. 
You are really bad at hiding your secret identity, Edward. <laughs> wow, Clark. You just missed Superman. How did you do that? Oh, I must have missed him when I was battling Doomsday. I mean, when Superman was battling Doomsday and not me, because I was hiding somewhere and not, and I'm not <laughs> Superman. Yes. Yeah. So afterwards, they pass the scene of an accident. That's when they find Bela Lugosi's body double dead, another animal attack. So on the way out of the building, she starts, re- Bella starts realizing shit. And that's when you get the most exciting part of the film. <laughs> that's when you get the montage. Montage. Googling stuff montage. Montage. Googling shit. I did Googling appreciate shit. that it was actually Google. Yeah, yeah. You don't you don't see that a lot. No. I appreciated the fact that when she looked up bookstores, it showed Barnes and Noble and then Borders and then uh mysterious bookshop by some Indian guy with one line. <laughs> yes. And it's like, okay, well, that's that's real. You don't see that often. Also, I'm not sure if you noticed this, Bunny, but author Stephanie Meyer has a small cameo in the film. Oh no, I did not know. She is a uh, she is a diner patron. She is at the the counter of the diner ordering food. Oh, she's and the then, one who had the she's the one who had the line. I'll have what she's having. Yeah, 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 basically. I remember her. So, it was actually Stephanie Myers is actually um Rob Reiner's mom. Yes, exactly. So, there's a big reveal scene in the woods and it's there that Bella realizes the truth. Edward is secretly an effeminate British man. <laughs> what? The best part of the Rift Tracks Twilight movie. And it's the part, and I know it's coming, and I laugh every time when Edward does the reveal to Bella that he's a vampire and she gets on his back and he does his fast run up the mountain. Yeah. Um, the Rift Tracks people start humming the Benny Hill music. <laughs> okay. And it's so fucking funny because he's doing his quick run up the mountain and and it's just so fucking funny and i know it's coming but i just i can't not laugh every time it's so good so um so apparently bella's smell is like heroin for edward and that's a bit odd like you should just say no edward Mm -hmm. and it's ridiculous because suddenly she's like i'm not afraid of anything I'm only afraid of losing you. Bitch, you don't even know him. <laughs> well, you've had like seven scenes together and suddenly you're completely in love with him? That's called codependency, bitch. <laughs> Fuck. And then, of course, and if her, the and if her smell is like heroin, then what's that smell going to be when she menstruates? Either iodine or dinner. It's funny because I imagine if I ever did heroin, I'd be like, oh, that feels great. And it smells like Kristen Stewart. That's so weird. <laughs> That's so weird. I, you know, I always heard that. <laughs> About three things, I was absolutely positive. First, Edward was a vampire. The second, Donald Trump is a big fat fucking liar. <laughs> and the third, the Transformers movies are really fucking stupid. <laughs> and then just like that, boom, Edward and Bella are dating now. Yeah. So yada, yada, yada. Now that they're dating, Edward does a shit ton of exposition that isn't important here. Yeah. Edward takes Bella to meet his vampire family, Yawn. <laughs> Then they go out and crouching tiger hidden vampire all over the cre- all over the trees. And it's creepy because Edward actually says, I like to watch you sleep. That is never a good 
sentence to ever say. Yeah. <laughs> like, no. like, that's never good. So they make out in a room, and then <laughs> they stay up all night and just talk, John. <laughs> then there's a cute, awkward scene where Edward... Hey, 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 quit it back there. <laughs> This is huh? a professional show. Yeah, yeah. It, well, Bella, Bella has gotten into the habit of watching TV with her own pair of headphones plugged into the television, so only she is listening to what's on the TV and not anyone else. Okay. So she has that, and she doesn't realize that she has the habit of then being louder than she realizes that she is being. <laughs> It's a... yes, I do it was loud, and that's what's making her laugh. Okay. No. <laughs> so, so then Edward and Bella go play baseball in a ridiculously yeah. stupid scene that's interrupted by the hot topic evil vampire clan who uh-huh. all dress like WWE wrestlers. <laughs> yes. And finally, after an hour and a half into the goddamn movie, there's finally a plot. <laughs> Good job, movie. Yeah. A so the evil vampire clan wants to kill Bella, so Edward hides Bella while the Sparkly family tries to kill the evil Hot Topic clan. They send Bella to Phoenix with two of the lesser known Sparkly family. But see, so, yeah. but see, this, see, this is where you're in a position where you're rooting for the wrong side because who didn't want to kill Bella? Exactly. Who didn't, you know, so so it was hard to get behind them as bad guys. Yeah. Plus, they all look like 1998 WWF professional wrestlers. Yeah. Like, any one of them could be tag-teaming with Christian. <laughs> yes. So, yada, 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 the sparkles spread Bella's scent all over Forks to throw the bad guys off the trail while Bella is in Phoenix with two of them. So, Bella leaves her handle, her handlers. Uh, the bad guy vampires say that they have Bella's mom, so Bella leaves her handlers to go and save her mom, but it's a trap! Because the head bad guy vampire has Bella trapped. She, she... She maces him, and oh yeah, that's great. That's a good idea. Why don't you try tasing a zombie while you're at it? Yeah. I'm sure that'll work. So, of course, Edward shows up at the last second, and there's a fight in the largest dance studio in Phoenix, Arizona. <laughs> and apparently, I didn't realize this, but apparently when two vampires fight each other, it's primarily throwing each other into mirrors. Yes. That's the majority of vampires fighting. It's not a bunch of fangs and clawing and biting each other. Nope, I'm going to push you into this mirror. Oh, yeah, well, I'm going to push you into this mirror. Ugh. So, so during the fight, the bad guy bites Bella and puts like venom in her or something. So they defeat the bad guy vampire and they kill the bad guy or vampire, and Edward sucks the poison out of her. She wakes up in the hospital. Edward and Bella have an argument where Edward thinks Bella should go to Florida to get away from him. And Bella goes full codependency no more on him because (laughs) uh, love, I guess. Uh, But love shouldn't be like this, kids. Just FYI, if you're listening, this is a stupid ass story. So the film ends with prom. Edward and Bella go. We get to see a, a small glimpse of Andrew Kendrick's boobs. Uh, Taylor Lautner shows up in the woods to warn her ominously. Mm-hmm. Then he goes back off to to back off into the woods to, I guess, go back to being Shark Boy. Well, he had a pee on a tree. Yeah, he had to go pee on a tree. You got to mark your territory Lautner. sometimes when you're yeah. a werewolf. Also, is it just me or is every man in this movie phenomenally gay? Like every man in this, film I I can see it. I, I I don't know if I would go phenomenal. I think I would go a little more ambiguous. Yeah, but still, every man in this movie could be gay. The uh, the ostentatious black teen at school, uh, Bella's dad, mm-hmm. uh, Edward, 
Taylor Lautner and his weird fake chair hair. Yeah. Everyone in this movie could be gay. Yes. Not that there's anything wrong with that. So anyway, Edward and Bella end up dancing and sharing a kiss inside the star's hollow gazebo. The end. Now, there's an interesting epilogue because uh, the Twilight books were phenomenally popular. So uh, Stephanie Meyer followed up the Twilight series with a brand new series for adults. These books are actually in the uh, in the the adult science fiction section and not okay. in the teen section. And it's a series called The Host. And what's interesting about this series is a uh, hold on. I'm going to put it on pause for a second. Okay. 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 Hold on. Okay, sorry. I really needed to pee. Okay, no problem. Okay. So, Stephanie Meyer follows up... Oh, what, Maxwell? What? Do you need to go potty? What? What's up? You need to lay down and relax, okay? It's very late, and you should be in bed. Lay down, relax. What's wrong, Maxwell? What? What? Oh, okay. So Stephanie Meyer follows up Twilight with a series, and it's this brand new series, and she says I, it's going to be three books, it's going to be the next big thing, and it's called The Host. And it's the host series, and she releases the first book, and it's supposed to be the next big thing. And this is the basic plot of the movie. Okay, so aliens come to Earth. Okay. And they immediately take over the minds of all humans. They, the aliens don't have bodies. They're like these parasites. So they take over the minds of humans. But what they do when they take over the minds of humans is they actually make everything better. So there's no more war. There's no more poverty. There's no more famine. They make everything perfect. And so the human minds just give up and allow the aliens to take over because everything is better. But there's one human who still stays human when the aliens take over his mind. So there's one person out there who is still his host body, but also in his mind is a second mind, and that's the mind of the aliens. And because it's a Stephanie Meyer book, this guy who just had his mind take over, taken over by aliens is in love with a woman, and the alien also falls in love with, a, with the same woman. So uh -huh. the only real big twist in this book is that it's a three-way love affair between two people. Yes, that does sound pretty fascinating. Yeah. And so, it begs... And and something like that really really begs the question. Yeah. Why? Yeah. <laughs> Why? Yeah. What, Maxwell? What? 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 Start talking. I'm asking you all these questions. And... I'm saying, I'm <laughs> what? Try and finish a sentence if you can. Okay. So she releases the host. It sells good. It doesn't sell Twilight good, but it sells really good. It sells enough 
that uh, Hollywood quickly comes calling because Stephanie Meyer is a big name now. And so they make a movie, a big budget movie. They make a, a they spend like twice as much as they did for Twilight on the host movie. And the movie comes out and it quickly fucking bombs. I don't know. But but the host, the host is kind of like house. There have been a lot of movies yeah. host yeah. or host related. Yeah. Knock it off. Yeah. Yeah, so the movie The Host comes out, and people have no idea what the fuck's going on. Yeah. So so the movie came out, the movie bombed, and here is the big mistake. Stephanie Meyer says, oh, wait, that movie bombed, and this, this book sold well, but it didn't sell that great, so, yeah, you know this trilogy I'm working on? Fuck it, I give up. I'm working on a new trilogy now. So she <laughs> starts working on a new trilogy, and the book recently came out, by Stephanie Meyer. It's a new book. It's called The Chemist. And we got about, roughly, about 150 copies of the book. And we returned. We ended up, after about a month of the book being on sale, we returned about 135 copies of it. Because nobody does The Chemist. Nobody knew it, what this new book was. It, nobody knew what it was about. They knew that it was Stephanie Meyer. But anybody who would have bought her new book was going, but wait, what happened to the host? I bought that. And I liked it. I've been waiting for books two and three. Wait, she give up on that? Okay. Now it's official. Fuck Stephanie Meyer. Yeah. So her career, I don't know what the hell is going on with her career, but it, it, it was a couple of hours ago recently that, I, that I, I came to the realization. I'm going, wow, so nobody wants to read The Chemist. Nobody, they're still pissed off at her because she's not going to read any more copies of The Host. Like, people are really pissed off at Stephanie Meyer right now. Holy shit, she's eventually going to go back. <laughs> She's going to have to. She's going to have to. Yes, yeah, she is eventually going to go back. It's like we have talked about so many times here. Someone becomes famous for one thing, it decides to go back and, 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 and blaze a trail with some new thing. Eventually, that does not become popular. So they come sulking back to the one thing that made them famous. That's why we got a basic instinct two a decade mm -hmm. later. That's why they're still making Rocky movies. And that's why eventually Stephanie Meyer is going to put her tail between her legs and write another goddamn Twilight book. Oh, yeah. That is a fact. Absolute fact. Mm -hmm. I, do, I do not doubt it for a moment. Not, not a single yeah. moment. Yeah. She's going to have to go back to the well. Especially when you're a no-talent hack like that. You yeah. Know. Yeah. I mean, She's that's a hard lesson and... to learn. Yeah. She's tried two different series. The series haven't been popular. She's not going anywhere. God damn it. Eventually, they're going to have to do more fucking Twilight books. It's going to be sad, but yeah, it's inevitable. So that's the end. That is all I've got for Twilight. I think I did an all right job of making Twilight bearable. Uh, um, I, I do. Yeah. Thank you. No. Now, no. as far as next week goes, I have an idea. Okay. I went looking through uh, Amazon Prime, looking for something uh, new and different, and I, I went, oh, okay, there's some possibilities, but eh. And I went through Netflix, and I came upon the same thing. And then I had an idea. I went looking through Crackle, and I'm like, okay, this is kind of different, but no. And then I go, okay, well, I can look through here. Is there something different here? Uh, maybe no. And that's when I, I, I went through left field. So I've got one, two, three, four, five possible movies for next week. Oh, okay. and, they all, and they all come from Shout Factory TV. Nice. You know, something different. I really like the people at Shout Factory. They're the they're they are really the people responsible for uh, uh, mystery science theater being back on the air. So yes, they are. And they've got they've got a good bizarre. Uh, random rotating hodgepodge of films that are available there. So I've got five different movies. They're all available on Shout Factory TV. And here are the five. I want you to choose whichever one we 
we pick would be a good episode. Oh, okay. so out of these five, here here are the uh, the here are your options. Okay. Okay. Day of the Dead. Uh, always a fine choice. That's a movie I've watched a million times and can watch a million yeah. more times. Yeah. Okay. The Kentucky Fried Movie. Same there. Yeah. Literally the same there. Rodan. They got Rodan? I didn't know they they had Rodan. Rodan Rodan is surprising because, yeah, it's a a Japanese guy in a rubber outfit monster movie, but the beginning of it starts as a really weird horror film. Yeah, about these miners and there's they're being killed and it's kind of graphic and like I've shown my kids all of these fucking uh, uh, Toho monster movies, but Rodan is a hard one for them to watch. Maxwell can't watch it; it's scary as hell for him. Yeah, and it's weird to think that there's like a kaiju '60s monster movie that is scary for children. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, but then it does so quickly take a nose nosedive. But Rodan yeah. was was actually my favorite kaiju. I I don't know what yes. it was about Rodan. I loved yeah. Rodan. Yeah, it's different. It is yeah. definitely different. Yeah. yeah. Sleepaway Camp. I thought that might be good because it's summer and just these are eh. these are good choices. Yeah, they're all good choices. And then finally, we almost have to do Sleepaway Camp at some point in very much the Troll 2 kind of way. Yeah. But then I feel that this last one, although it's a it's a it's slightly left field, I feel that this last one, any one of these would be a good episode. But this one, I feel, would be has a slight advantage just in the weird world of our podcast. BMX Bandits. (laughs) <laughs> but either one of these any one of these films would be a good episode yeah uh ooh. day of the tad kentucky fried movie rodan sleepaway camp and bmx bandits all available at shoutfactorytv.com or your roku or any other place let's go with kentucky fried movie sweet Kentucky Fried Movie. I haven't seen that in forever. No, no, but I love it. That and the Groove Tube. Yeah, and I, I mean, I almost Fried think of them. Hmm? Kentucky Fried Movie, that's the one with Samuel L. Bronkowitz, right? Yes, yes. Yes. Okay. That's, and... that's, that's the one with the Pitch Perfect uh, Enter the Dragon parody, right? Yes, exactly. Okay, I love that. A one. Fistful of them. Yen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that one's perfect. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's gonna be. And good. that was such a perfect parody too. It was. It was. Just, it was just damn good. Mm-hmm. This has been yeah. a good episode. I think this has been a good episode. It's been a long episode, but god damn it, we had some good stuff to say. And and I got a piece. So sweet. Till next time, I am Bunny Williams. And I am Reverend Steve saying thank you for listening. And on behalf of uh, Bella and Emerald and Natasha and, and, and Maxwell and Eleanor and every genie and everybody else, I just want to say thank you for listening. And we will see you next week, you godless heathens. And you do swaffles and poopy tits. Thank you, Bella. Do 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 do